So, if you are the type who is looking for a fast-paced ganyan type of book, this is not it. This is really the type of book that you read slowly. Intentionally slowly. I read this slowly. Right now, just because in the situation we are in, I would recommend this to everyone. But I don't know if her writing style is for everyone because the subject matter itself is about waiting, right? It's about understanding waiting and in the patience to to do that. So, hi guys! This is Paul Loves Read. And as you know, in Paul Loves Read, this is all about spreading the love and joy of literature. And we hope that our little channel helps you to find the right book for you. And today, I am going to share uh, about this book. It's called Birds Art Life, A Year of Observation by Keo McClear. And this was published in... I should always remember this para hindi ko na siya tinitignan every time. This was published in 2017. So, okay pa rin. Not too old. So, it's really, a, you know, it's a nice, it's a lovely little book. And as you could see, I have a lot of markings. Um, this is, by the way, this is a new, if if you've been here before in Paul Loves to Read, this is a new habit that I have formed um, because before, I used to just dog-ear the pages. But since... See si Ray, he bought me this nice little post-it thingy. It's really helpful um, to mark the, you know, memorable things in the book. So this book is actually non-fiction, right? Um, and it's not a memoir. It's not. It's quite unique in that sense. So this lady, see si Kiyo McClear, she, um, as the title, as the title itself says, she wrote about her year, her one year of observation, and. Kiyo McClear is an artist, she draws, she writes, but primarily she's a writer. And the story opens up with her sharing about her dad's illness. So she is in that kind of, you know, headspace. She's not exactly sad or mourning because, you know, the, the dad is there. Hindi naman, the dad is not dying, he's just, he, he's just in, he's been in and out of the hospital and her, she's been in that kind of limbo state. She, did, she, she, she's not sure on how to deal with that because she knows her dad to be a strong individual, and she knows her dad to be, you know, a big, you know, big personality in her life. So she's not used to her dad in and out of the hospital, and she did, she wasn't sure how to deal with it exactly. So what she did was to kind of take a pause and figure out how to deal with it. And she met a musician who is also a bird watcher. So that's where. Um, the story actually revolves about her experience in being a bird watcher, hence the title um, "A Year of Observation." And it's really an observation about literal na observation about birds, and observation about her learnings throughout her bird watching. So it's really a very insightful and very thoughtful book, and it's beautiful because it's nonfiction and it's written. She writes so well. <laughs> That's another thing. It's written very. Poetically, almost. I don't want to sound cheesy or corny or anything like that. Pero ganon talaga siya. It's really like that. She writes beautifully. It's, it's very, you know, it's it flows. She's, she, she, it sounds almost like she's writing a poem. Um, so so it's, it's a really lovely little book. I bought this in... <laughs> I bought this in the Big Bad Wolf um, online sale. It is an obscure book. It's an obscure title. I am not a bird watcher. I've never really, you know, birds fascinate me every time na may lilipad na ibon dyan sa bintana. <laughs> it always, they, these birds always fascinate me. I don't know why, but I never really thought of bird watching as a discipline or something that would be interesting. Parang kasi, your first thought of bird watching, it must be boring, right? It must be quiet. It must be, you know, it, it, it must be for, for people who just have plenty of time because it must take a lot of time. And this book, when I saw it, you know, I passed through it. Hindi ko talaga siya pinansin. But, I don't know, it was actually Ray who read, who read up on the synopsis. And then we looked it up in Goodreads and in other reviews. And it actually has a very good synopsis and a very good, some of the good reviews. And that got me curious. I wanted to read about how she could make or how a person could make me, an, an, an average person, be 
curious enough or more interested in bird watching and more so because it's non-fiction so i thought that was you know that gives it another layer of of interest for me i love the book i love the book it's it's a lovely little book it's very insightful it's very i want to say deep but i don't want to intimidate readers um when i say deep it's really more of a lot of realizations uh, for you the reader because in her sharing you cannot help but also reflect on your own experiences and on your own um, feelings your own emotions about your current situation or whatever state you are in right now right so that's why i i say it's deep hindi yung deep na parang mahirap intindihin hindi ganun <laughs> it's you know it's that it's that kind of deep na it's really about you it's an introspection so i enjoyed it i i loved it it's it's a precious little book i believe that it's very timely this book is timely now granted it's published in 2017 but the subject matter i feel like it's perfect for our situation now we're in it feels like we are forever in quarantine in pandemic pandemic <laughs> we have been in um quarantine and in this pandemic situation for more than 18 months now and i could imagine that almost all of us are in a state of waiting diba right? you're you're kind of like we are kind of like in a perpetual suspended waiting state like when is life coming back when can i resume my old life back and so on and so forth and that's exactly how kyo feels in the book because um yun nga, the story opened with her kind of waiting also what would happen to her dad and she's trying to deal with that and she don't she doesn't know how to so that is there's a similarity there and in her waiting in her waiting and in her bird watching that's where she discovered to take a pause and to appreciate the little things and to be easy be kind to herself and to also you know um ano yung kasabihan na yun? stop and smell the roses ganyan so so yun kasi parang she she her her realization is that it's okay to slow down and it's there's no guilt nor nor shame in doing that so i love how she shared that part of her of her year of her realization i i feel like this book is about if i say it's about life it's too broad it's really about the little things in life it's about appreciating uh, and learning to appreciate the little things in life and really understanding that those are the things that matter and that it's okay to be kind to yourself and to slow down and you know don't take it for granted na parang if you're slowing down and if you're not doing anything it doesn't mean you are wasting your time so it's ano it's about that it's about you know taking taking stock of of your of yourself one side note about the book or about the author Keo Maclear you know diba she 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 has a she has a um, uncommon name combination diba Keo Maclear um she is actually a daughter of a japanese woman uh, her mother is an artist i think her mother is quite a known artist in japan and her father is a british um reporter war reporter uh, another known journalist writer and they migrated to canada at some point she didn't say exactly when but they did and her childhood is composed of her um going back and forth in canada to from and to japan in canada so why am i saying this i'm saying this because because i'm a fan of japanese authors and writers and when i started reading her i didn't realize that background yet because she didn't say it right away but i kind of noticed it already when she you know in the way she's writing there's just again there's just really something about japanese writing and i i felt that somehow she's not fully a japanese writer you know syempre may western side din siya there's a sentimentality in the way she writes there is a kind of a strangeness ito na naman ako kind of a strangeness in the way she writes and very subtle and that's kind of for me that's that's almost like a signature japanese writing eh. so so you you will feel that and that is also important in her in her story itself her background because she would always you know pull memories from her childhood and why she's like this uh, why she views things the way she does and then she also tells about her father who lived his life to the fullest as a war reporter as a journalist 
her father is always at the front lines of the story. Always, you know, ganda ng, ano, she has a nice description here wherein for normal people, when there's a disaster, everybody's running away from the disaster. But her father, her father would be the one guy who would go directly in that direction because he wants to capture the story. He wants to tell the truth and so on. So she captured both these di disciplines from the mom and from the dad, the artist side from the mom, and then the writer side from the dad. So that kind of gives you, you know, a better sense of, of how she is as a person. And her observation throughout the year kind of dissects that as well. So I thought that was, that was you know, that's, a, that's kind of like a good background to understand um, her thinking. Um, it's not a memoir, no. Um, I don't know what it's called, pero she just basically documented her year. Uh, that's why she titled it A Year of Observation. And it's nice because the way the book is is um, partitioned is by ano, by the season. So she opens the story in the winter time and then ganun na. in every season she will tell you about her learnings, about her realizations. And it's it's a full year. She started in winter, she will end the story in winter time as well. In conclusion, I love this book. Um, it's a very, like I said, it's a lovely little book. It's a nice, um, it's a very timely book to read now. I would recommend this to, right now, just because in the situation we are in, I would recommend this to everyone. But I don't know if her writing style is for everyone because the subject matter itself is about waiting, right? It's about understanding, waiting, and, and the patience to to do that. So if you are the type who is looking for a fast-paced ganyan type of book, this is not it. This is really the type of book that you read slowly, intentionally slowly. I read this slowly, okay? Um, I really intentionally, you know, absorb word per word. Parang I took my sweet time per page. So it took me a few days to, to finish a relatively small book. Um, <laughs> and, and I'm glad I did because that's really the only way that you could absorb it and you could understand what she's saying and you could reflect also on along the way with her anyway yun. so i would <laughs> ah nalala ko na. in conclusion i would recommend this book what is also precious uh, about this book is that i absolutely feel like this is a timeless book you could keep it on your shelf read it in the next two or three years you'll come away with a different realization it's that type of book you will always come away with it with a different, deeper um, realization. Why? Because you read it at the different stages of your life and you are a different person in different stages of your life. So, so you know, this one is, is good to keep in your shelves. So, there you go. Thank you.